The purpose of this video is to show you some of the neat number sense capabilities that are inherent in the design of the Ken Ken puzzle. And what I've got here is a 6x6 six six Ken Ken from the New York Times. It's classified as a medium level. And before we start the actual solution, what I always suggest people to do is to look down here, draw the numbers that are possible. And I call these the raw materials, and since this is a 6x6 six six Ken Ken, then the only numbers that you can use are the numbers 1 through 6. And if you're familiar with Sudoku, then the first two rules of Ken Ken are the same. You cannot repeat any of the numbers 1 through 6 in any row or any column. All the numbers must show up, but there are no repeats. Now the third rule of Ken Ken is the one that creates the wonderfulness that can be used in the classroom. And what that means is we're going to take a look at, in particular here just at three things that are called cages. And if you look at this box right in here, you see one, two, three squares all outlined by a large or thick line. This is called a cage. And what this says is you're going to try to find three numbers that add up to nine. I'm going to let you pause the video right here if you want to try this on your own. And now I'm going to show you some possibilities here. Certainly if you take a look at two, three, and four, those three numbers do add up to nine. But it's not the only possible combination. It's also possible to find three odd numbers. One, three, and five but we're still not done. There's also possibilities that we haven't seen yet. For instance, one, two, and six. A lot of times students will find a solution to a problem and figure that they're done. But unfortunately, they don't realize that there is more than one possibility. And it's these explorations of multiple possibilities, multiple solutions, that's one of the strengths of Ken Ken. It, it tends to develop very good, very strong problem solvers in students. The next cage that I want to take a look at here is a cage that, again, has got three squares. And it's kind of a backwards L. And this one says, let's find three numbers that multiply to give you four. And a lot of students say, oh, well, let's just try four and one and one. Some people may say, well, gee, you can't do that because you have two ones in here. But keep in mind that these particular ones are in distinct rows and distinct columns. So it's okay to do that. But there's another possibility. We haven't seen everything yet. And it's certainly possible to put the number two here and the number two here and the number one there. Multiple choices. Now, the third one that I want to take a look at here, which has got a lot more strength to it than the first two, is this guy right up here, the backwards L24. And I'm going to go over to the side here, talk about the number 24. And we're going to talk about prime factorization. We're going to talk about factor trees and all kinds of really cool stuff. Certainly, if I ask you to factor 24, one of the first things that a lot of people say is it's 4 times 6. 4 and 6 will certainly go into those three cages, th th those three boxes over there in the cage, but you need three numbers. And if you put another one in there, then certainly four times six times one will go into these boxes right over here. But what you have to realize is four, six, and one could go in actually six different ways. And then you get to talk about combinations and permutations if you want to talk about two. There's six different arrangements of those three numbers. And the one that's correct is the one that also makes use of the fact that all of the six numbers have to appear in each row and all six numbers have to appear in each column. So let's go a little further here. If we take a look at 24 one more time, we know that 24 can be factored in more than one way. 4 times 6 is certainly 1. It could be 2 times 12. That's not going to work for us because 12 is not one of our raw materials. 24 could also be factored as 3 times 8. That won't work either because 8 is not one of our raw materials. So we have to dig a little deeper. So let's go back to 24 and factor it the original way we had here, 4 and 6. Now, if we're looking for prime factorization, then 4 is a composite number. It's not prime, but it can be factored as 2 times 2. So we got 2 times 2 times 6. And it's possible to put those three numbers into the grid and make it work. But we're not done yet. 
we can take the 24 and again factor it into our original factorization, 4 and 6. 6 is a composite number and it could be factored into 2 times 3. So it's possible to take 3 times 2 times 4 and put it into that cage. So there are multiple possibilities, multiple choices here. There are clues all over this Ken Ken and it's a wonderful puzzle, wonderful for developing number sense. Every teacher that has used Ken Ken that I've talked with or has emailed me is just in love with this particular puzzle. They all report that their students love it. The number sense develops. They get to be a hero. So why don't you try it too? You get to be a hero and go ahead and enjoy this.